Good afternoon. I am Nikolai Nyholm, uh, the founder and co-CEO of Astralis Group. Uh, we're here today with Nordnet uh, in our pre-IPO presentation. Uh, today we'll take you a little bit through our current business, how we came here, uh, and where we're going in the future. But I'll just start just by playing you a bit of a video, um, giving you some more background. So just a bit of a recap of, uh, of who we are. We have uh, three teams today. Astralis uh, competes in Counter-Strike, uh, which is a first person shooter, the uh, second most popular esports title of all time. Uh, the team we originally took over in um, August of uh, 2016, uh, immediately brought them to a number one position or within half a year brought them to a number one position. And they've been the dominating team for, for these past uh, three years. As Val, the developer of Counter-Strike put it, um, the first ever dynasty in the 20 years of, of Counter-Strike. Um, the team we also have been able to bring into break even as of August of, of this year, which for us is an important milestone because it shows the sustainability of, of building an esports business. About a year ago, we took over uh, the legendary brand uh, Origin uh, in League of Legends. Uh, Origin League of Legends is a, is a so-called MOBA, uh, multiplayer online battle arena, uh, much like, uh, like Dota 2 as well. Um, Origin was originally founded back in 2014 by Enrique Xpeque Cedeno. Um, and we entered into League of Legends as it was franchised here in Europe, um, bringing 10 teams together in the same way as we've seen now in North America, in China, and Korea. So we have four global leagues with 10, 10 teams each. We finished second in our first season um, and fifth overall in, in 2019 and have been making some amazing um, roster changes here in the off season, very upbeat for, for the coming season. Future FC is our uh, latest uh, little brother, little sister. It was launched in September of this year. 
um, three young players, uh, Roy Feldman from Israel, Fatih Usten, who's the global number four player right now, and the, one of the first uh, female pros ever, uh, Stephanie Santos Teca uh, out of Brazil. The reason why we're entering into um, FIFA just at this point is we, we find that we're at a tipping point with regards to FIFA and esports. We've seen in the, just the last year a 60% year over year growth in viewership. Um, we're starting to see po have pockets around the world where uh, playing FIFA is more popular than watching football. Um, and finally, it's also a good stepping stone for sponsors who want to move into esports but need something a bit more familiar familiar to what they're they're doing on a daily basis. So, a bit of an introduction to, to esports. It's a global uh, competitive entertainment with more more than 450 million viewers uh, on a global scale uh, this year. We see um, large tournaments like the League of Legends final, which attracts more viewers. Last year, 205 million viewers, of which 150 million were in, in China. Then the Eurovision Song Contest, then the NFL Super Bowl. We also have physical uh, tournaments like IEM Katowice, which attracts more than 170,000 fans every year, which is on par uh, or much above uh, the local Roskilde Festival here in, in Denmark. It's a demographic which is taking over where uh, other uh, entertainment brands are, are leaving off at this, uh, this point. This is a, a, a chart which uh, shows um, the growth of or the average age of uh, TV viewers in 2016 of major global sports brands. Um, and it shows what change there was in, in, in age since 2016. We obviously see motorsports as, as being the ones who are uh, lagging uh, far behind, but, but in general, just the fact that esports is an is, is, um, is entertainment category viewed by the 15 to 39 year olds puts it in vast opposition to the aging demographics of, of traditional sports. What we have in esports today is a tremendous opportunity um, in the next couple of years to um, catch up with the monetization that we're seeing in, in traditional sports. We might never um, see quite a monetization of, of baseball, but even if we reach half of that, uh, we think that there is uh, amazing opportunities to monetize the uh, fan group on a, on a global basis. Um, we, this is a borderless uh, fan base, a borderless viewer base that we can address with our own media, that we can address with our own direct-to-fan products. The growth here is the conservative growth um, set by, um, by a couple of, of, uh, of analysts, 20% uh, year over year through 2022. Um, but this is not even including adjacent uh, industries like sports betting in the US, which hasn't been fully liberalized at this point. So we're generally uh, anticipating uh, high growth in, 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 the, in, the, in the general category. Astralis Group, um, we've, been, we've been staffing up quite tremendously here uh, since summer. Uh, bringing in my co-CEO, uh, Anas Hassan, who joined us uh, from MTG. Uh, before that, he was uh, CEO of Parkin Sports and Entertainment, which includes the Danish football club, uh, FC Kirkenhau. Uh, Jakob Hansen uh, joins us uh, most recently as, as being the, um, the, the CEO of Fitness DK, sold that to SATS and was there through the transition and the IPO. Uh, this year of, of SATS in, in Norway. Our sports director is a 20-year handball pro. Uh, he comes into the industry not having done esports before. Uh, he's been a tremendous um, asset in the professionalization of, uh, of, uh, of treating the, 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 the players as pro athletes on par with a football player, a handball player, a Formula One driver. Uh, my co-founder Jacob uh, has has been in esports for the past 12, 15 years, um, and it's the only thing he's done his entire life. He is the authenticity 
uh, or he, he, he is the authentic voice to the fans in, in our business. He understands their voice. He understands their needs. Um, and he uh, does our, our commercial partnerships in, in a way which engages with the fans, with the, with the spectators. Finally, uh, our VP communications and, and brand, um, Steen Lawson, uh, has a long history from both um, consumer goods as well as, as other uh, sports and entertainment brands. This, is, this chart here shows the development of um, Astralis. Um, this is our win to loss ratio. Uh, since we took over Astralis in, in, uh, in the summer of 2016, they weren't doing particularly well at that point. Uh, we were the first to introduce uh, on a serious scale, sports psychologists, nutritionists, sleep therapists, physiotherapists, uh, physical training uh, in a holistic package, which really is all about um, taking and, and, and taking the al already talent, the talent which is already with the players and, and moving that to the next level. Not just moving them to being into number one position, but also keeping them on top week after week, month after month, as, as competition is, is chasing them. We've successfully um, taken this model uh, and, and, and also used it uh, for Origin, our team in League of Legends, and now also in FIFA, and we will be, whatever titles we might be expanding to in the future, will obviously be, be operated under exactly the same uh, model, which, uh, which maximizes our return on the investments into, into athletes. In just three years, Actually, if we look at 2018, in just two years, uh, we took uh, Astralis into being the, the most watched Counter-Strike brand globally. Um, we find this is quite a feat against organizations who've been around for five years, 10 years, 15 years. Most of these uh, teams here have been around for more than a decade. Um, and it's a testament to our ability to build brand and engage uh, with a global viewer base. Our revenue streams uh, currently consist of, of three components, uh, mainly sponsorships uh, and commercial partnerships with, uh, with brands who want to reach this young demographic, a demographic that doesn't watch TV, a demographic that has ad blockers um, on their web browsers, on their mobile phones. And uh, this currently uh, today um, is 70% is of our, our revenues. Uh, merchandise, uh, which uh, we're still in the early phases of, um, we have done partnerships with uh, Jack, and, Jack and Jones around um, Astralis, uh, and we are nations around uh, Origin. Um, it has been much about building out our presence in the in the general um, retail uh, landscape. We'll be maximizing that the next couple of years, expanding our retail partnerships, expanding the merchandise lines, and also creating uh, one-off uh, pieces which are only available directly to, to our, our most dedicated fans. Finally, the, the, uh, the very interesting um, category here of, of leagues, um, leagues that we are either permanent members of or have bought our way into much like the North American franchise leagues of NBA, NFL, NHL, um, gives us access to media revenues. Um, revenues from online streaming providers like Twitch and YouTube, but also traditional broadcasters like TV2 in Denmark, Ule in, in Finland, Globo in uh, Brazil, and Pozeven in Germany, who are broadcasting now in a massive way um, esports in order to attract a, a younger uh, audience. Um, in League of Legends, we acquired the rights um, to spot in the coveted LEC championship, uh, essentially the top 10 teams for all of Europe, uh, consider it a Champions League being played every year. We have four such uh, leagues globally and, and are one of, uh, thus one of, of 40 uh, teams altogether. Um, we're also, we will be investing into uh, the participation in, in new leagues in both Counter-Strike as well as in, in, in FIFA, these either by new operators coming into the space or existing uh, operators who are, are already there. 
thus further securing uh, revenue streams from broadcasters and from league-wide sponsorships. On, from an investment perspective, we'll be looking quite heavily into two specific categories in the next couple of years. One is uh, new media initiatives. We've done a good job in organically growing our channels on YouTube, on uh, Instagram, uh, but we'll be investing heavily into content, uh, monetizing both with our commercial partners and through advertising revenue. Um, and finally, what I find is the most exciting um, categories direct to consumer, direct to fan. These are subscription products, physical products uh, that we can offer to our most dedicated fan bases across all teams. Um, and this is this is something we'll start uh, investing in 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 a, in a significant way from 2020, but probably only starting to see revenues from 2021. A bit on our financial uh, forecast. Uh, mind you, the, the the first two bars are uh, Q1 uh, to Q3 2019 realized, and Q4 uh, estimated. Uh, for 2019, respectively, while 2020 and 2021 estimates are in as well. Um, we've done a quite a good job in um, taking uh, in, in growing revenues during this uh, period to a point where um, where losses are are not extensive. Um, in 2021, uh, assuming that we're still operating under a base scenario, which means the three current teams will be in uh, break even or with a slight uh, profit. The base case, um, as mentioned, is the three current teams. We're anticipating um, quite a lot of opportunities in the next couple of years, either to organically grow uh, new teams or uh, acquire other existing teams, which is of course also one of the reasons to be listing at this point when we, um, as we see that the the uh, the market is looking to a general consolidation uh, of players. Our use of funds, as discussed before, uh, a good portion of it goes to league buy-in. Uh, for League of Legends, the buy-in uh, of a slot uh, was 10.5 million euros. There were 140 applicants uh, here in, in Europe. Uh, 10 were selected. Um, and we can already see that in some of the other leagues, like the North American League, there's been multiple trades of slots. So a slot being the right to participate in the league, not necessarily uh, under the same uh, same name, the same uh, brand, and not necessarily with commercial um, existing commercial sponsorships uh, being played in. And yet, we've already seen three trades this summer in uh, between 30 to 33 million uh, US. Um, and and mind, mind you, slots that were, were bought less than two years ago uh, for 12 million uh, US. We'll also be investing into product development. This is on the media side, uh, as well as, as direct to fan products as discussed before. And of course, uh, international reach uh, and, and, and constantly developing our brand um, uh, says itself and, and is, is one of the premises for uh, continued increased uh, monetization. So, in summary, um, we uh, we we believe that uh, you know we have an amazing foundation uh, for further uh, capitalizing on the growth that we're seeing in esports today. We have a proven business model. We've proven that we can take uh, even young teams, unproven teams, unproven rosters to success. Um, We've reached uh, break even with Astralis as a team. Um, and finally, we have a 100% borderless um, fan base uh, across Northern Europe, Southern Europe, South America, and Southeast Asia and China, uh, which, uh, gives us, um, um, which, which gives us which gives us some some opportunities to monetize that you don't typically see in the entertainment or competitive entertainment uh, categories. Finally, um, a little bit of background key data uh, around the listing. Um, the offer period started 18th of November, closes this Friday, 29th of uh, November at uh, midnight. 
the completion of offering and settlement will be on the 5th of December and the anticipated first day of trading uh, on NASDAQ First North uh, is the 9th of December 2019. We already, um, prior to uh, submitting the prospectus, had 41 investors, including several uh, existing investors and board members who subscribe for a total of 57 uh, million. This space is not just Nordic, uh, but also a great representation from uh, Singapore uh, with reaches into the Chinese, uh, ch the Chinese markets. Thank you so much and, and uh, hope that you'll join us as, uh, as co-owners, um, as shareholders of, of Astralis Group. Um, we, uh, we feel that uh, this is still very early in our journey with uh, an amazing uh, future uh, ahead of us. So we have a couple of, of questions uh, from uh, Nordnet, uh, which I'll just uh, read aloud and, and address. The first is, um, where do you see the esports industry in, in five years? Um, I think the, the the numbers very much uh, speak for themselves. We've seen a, a constant uh, growth of, of new viewers uh, as you know this existing this current generation uh, where gaming is is definitely the de facto uh, most important cultural leisure activity. Um, it is the popular culture of today has become gaming, and as we go from uh, playing ourselves to watching gaming as entertainment, uh, the, the final step and most valuable step is is competitive uh, entertainment, thus esports. Um, I think we're going to we're still going to be seeing uh, the, the the games that we find we see popular today. League of Legends has been around for ten years, uh, Counter Strike for twenty years, and FIFA for for twenty four. These games are not uh, disappearing, uh, not in the five-year time frame, and, and not in a 20-year time frame uh, either. These are games that have legacy across generations. Um, I play both FIFA and Counter-Strike with uh, with my children, um, and and I think that when when we see um, when we see the audience in the in arenas, they show up uh, cross-generational is the same way that my uncle took me to football matches when when I was a kid. So I think we'll we'll see we'll definitely see a more mature uh, industry. We'll see one which has been consolidated possibly. Uh, right now we have a lot of uh, of um, uh, of teams that have invested into single franchises and 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 will not be able to operate on as high a level uh, in in the long run as as uh, as we are in in Astralis Group and as some of our top competitors are. So we anticipate uh, some market consolidation there. The second one is uh, why investors should take uh, part in our uh, initial public offering. Um, well, I mean, the, one of the reasons for 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 for, for doing the IPO was uh, a very uh, successful fundraise this uh, this summer uh, with uh, with private investors, the uh, investors that are uh, the, our, our core base of of our shareholders um, today. And this really gave us the um, the trust in in private investors. At the same time, we also wanted to put ourselves in a position where we were we as founders, myself and and Jacob, my co-founder, uh, were not forced to uh, to necessarily sell the company in 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 the shorter or medium or even long term. Um, IPOing uh, gives us the opportunity to bring on board new shareholders who can decide to join and leave um, as they want, uh, giving flex, giving essentially ultimate uh, flexibility. While we can also do some investments like our participation in the LEC, which are 20, 30 year um, uh, investments and, and, and which will really show their, their worth uh, over, over the long run. And finally, uh, why is Astralis Group better than than other players in the industry? Um, I think we're we, we've built an amazing machine. Um, you know, we're 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 building on a passion and uh, feelings from our fans, but we have built on the other hand a business which is clear, uh, straight, uh, cutthroat. 
uh, we've shown how we can take teens um, who might not otherwise have been given a chance in their respective games and, and propel them to, to the very top. Um, we've proven with uh, Australis um, an important milestone, I think, for the entire industry, uh, which is that we can take a top team uh, in a growth situation, both to being uh, profitable, but also to being a, a, um, a, a global uh, marquee brand in, in Counter-Strike. And we're now doing the same with, uh, with Origin. So I think, you know, we're definitely at the top. We have some great competition, both here in Europe, in Asia and in, in, in North America, uh, but we'll be one of the, uh, the, the continue to be one of the pioneers in, in, uh, in, in the years uh, coming up. Thank you again and, um, and hope to uh, welcome you uh, as part of our family.